In this repair video, we're gonna be working on an HP laptop that came in for no power. Now I started the recording and I just realized that the recorded file is corrupt. I'm recording as MP4. And for some reason, the file is corrupt and I've been working on this laptop for the past 30 minutes and I changed two MOSFETs and it's still a no fix. Right now, what I did in OBS is change the recording format from MP4 to MKV. MKV does not get corrupt. But later on, we would have to remix the recording from MP4 or from MKV back to MP4 so we can edit the video. The model number of the laptop is 15-CS0025CL. And the laptop looks something like this. This is the motherboard right here. We have the charging flex cable here. What we did is we plugged the cable in and we monitored the board under a thermal cam. We noticed heat right under the Wi-Fi module. We removed that card and it turns out that heat is coming from back of the board and not from front of the board. We're gonna plug the charging cable right here. And when you plug the charging cable, we should see a light on the cable to indicate that the motherboard accepted voltage. There's a problem with the motherboard and that's why the charging flex or the charging cable is not showing light. We're gonna monitor the board under a thermal cam and see what happens. The thermal camera will show me any abnormal heat spots on the board. Let's go ahead and plug the charging cable. I already did this before but I'm doing it again just to show you what I did since we lost the first part of the video. Right now I have the charging cable plugged in. And let's take a look at the motherboard under a thermal camera and see what's going on. And look at this. We see heat on this area of the board. Heat is not coming from this side of the board, but rather it's coming from back of the board. The reason I know this is because you cannot pinpoint where heat is coming from on this side of the board. Heat is diffused. So if we flip the board, now we see a sharp heat spot right here. And that heat spot is coming from a MOSFET on the board. I'm gonna point my tweezer over it. And let's take a look at the microscope. Right there. Heat is coming from here. So initially heat was coming from this side of the board. We had a Wi-Fi card here. I removed that Wi-Fi card and noticed that we do not have anything here. And heat looks diffused here. There's no single component that is heating up. So I knew that heat was coming from back of the board. At that time, we still had the board inside the laptop. I asked Big Boss to remove the board and I flipped the board and I noticed that heat is coming from this particular MOSFET, from this one. So what I immediately did was replace this MOSFET and this MOSFET. I did not even do any measurements. The reason is it only takes me two minutes to change those MOSFETs and it takes me a lot longer to do measurements. So why not just change the MOSFETs? and see if that will solve the problem. So that's what I did, and that's what I always do. I do not sit 20, 30 minutes trying to measure and diagnose why is voltage 1.6 and not 1.8, why is voltage 3.6 and not 3.2. I do not do any of that. I saw a large heat spot here. I replaced both MOSFETs, and that did not solve the problem. So I put those MOSFETs back. Right now, since that did not fix the problem, then we have to start measuring. That's what we have to do. Let's go ahead and plug the charging cable and we're going to measure in voltage mode and see what readings we get. Drain on this MOSFET should be reading 19 volts and it's reading 19 volts. Source is reading 0 volts. Why? Because probably gate is reading 0 volts. We need voltage on the gate in order for drain to pass on to source. 0. What about the second MOSFET here. Source zero, of course, because this is connected with this. So we have zero here. And gate, we have zero. And drain, we have zero. Let me unplug. Now we're gonna measure in diode mode. Or maybe we can measure in continuity mode. I wanna see, do we have a short from drain to source here? We do not. Do we have a short from maybe a drain to gate? We do not. What about gate to source? We do not. And if we measure the second MOSFET, 
same procedure. So I'm not measuring a short on either one of the MOSFETs as far as drain to source goes or drain to gate or gate to drain. So let's go to diode mode and I'm gonna measure drain, we have 0 0.6, healthy reading. And gate, we have 1.755, same as gate here. Both gates are reading 1755 voltage drop. And we have a short on this side. We do not have any nearby capacitors. Maybe we have those two, but those should not be related. This is good. This is good. What if we flip the board? Do we have any capacitors on the back? Not really. So let's follow that trace. We're gonna follow the trace. Let me go under the microscope. And you can see flux here because I previously replaced both MOSFETs. We have a short here. If we follow this trace, we go through this current sense resistor Follow the trace, follow the trace, keep going. It's like a maze. Which way should we go, this way or that way? Let's try that way. We have a MOSFET. Is it possible that this MOSFET is bad? It's possible. Let's do a quick measurement to see if our source is shorting with drain or gate. So I'm gonna assume this MOSFET is good. Keep going, keep going, keep going through that maze. And now we have a dead end here, but we can go up this way. We have a dead end here. Is it possible that this capacitor is shortened to ground? It's possible. Meter in diode mode. And we have a short here. Usually I'm looking for a big capacitor that may be shortened to ground and not a small one. We reach that end, maybe we can go back and up like this. And we have two caps here. Are we measuring a short here? And we are. I mean, every capacitor on that line is gonna be shortened to ground because there's something that is shortened the circuit to ground. We have a lot of entries and exits to that maze. So right now, I may be interested in one of those two big caps. Usually big caps are the ones that cause problems. So we're gonna keep those in mind. Let's just go back a bit. We already checked this area dead end and we have a short here, of course, because the whole line is short into ground. We have a dead end here. Let's go back a bit. I just want to see what's out there. Follow that path. Follow that path. MOSFET. And let's go this way. We did not check this route. We should have a short here also. And we do. And we do. And of course, we're going to have a short here. We're going to have... We have big caps here also. And those appear to be on a different line and not on the same line. So I'm not gonna worry about those caps. We have a short on those two caps. So I would be interested in looking into those two caps. And finally, this one here. I mean, right now, a lot of things to look into. What we're gonna do is inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera on any one of those big caps and see what gets hot. Where should we start? I mean, right now we are going way too far, but we can inject voltage at any one of those capacitors and then see where heat is coming from. Why don't we do it from here? We cannot just remove all those capacitors to see where the short is coming from. The short may not be coming from the caps. Short may be coming from some chip on the board. 
or the short could be coming from one of those gaps. We have to work smart. What I'm going to do is inject maybe 1.5 volts. I'm going to inject it at any one of those two caps. We're going to be using our voltage injection tool. And I have it set at 1.5 volts. So let's see what happens when we inject voltage at any one of those two caps. Maybe we need to move the camera a bit like this. And what happens when we inject voltage here? Look at this. 7 amp draw. Wow. Wow. So right now, we need to look at the board under a thermal camera while injecting voltage and see what gets hot on the board. We should be able to tell on the thermal camera what is getting hot on the board. So what happens when we inject voltage while looking at the board under a thermal cam? Okay, so right now the caps are right over here. Let me touch the capacitor, one, two, three. And what is getting hot? Oh, look at that. Okay, let's do this one more time. Touch the probe. And something is getting hot right over here. What got hot is this area right here. And I do not think this tiny cap is going to cause a 7 amp short. Let's take a look at back of the board and see what's going on there. It's very possible that it could be any one of those two caps or maybe the chip itself. I do not know which chip this is. But the problem could be any one of those caps, possibly the big ones. And I already see a burn mark here or maybe burned flux. Maybe the caps got too hot to a point where they released flux from under them and that flux burned. Look at this. Let's measure here. We have a short and we have a short. And of course, we're going to have a short here. We're going to have a short here, here. What about this one? We have a short here too. And we do not have a short here. And we do not have a short here. So it's basically this area here. If we have to guess, it has to be one of those two because of that burned flux that I see here. We know it's none of the caps on the board except for caps that are in this area. Thermal camera showed us heat in this particular area, whether it's back of the board or front of the board. Right now, if we want to think logical, the problem is either those two caps or this IC. Since it's a lot easier working with caps, let's go ahead and remove the caps one by one and see what happens. I'm using my hot tweezers along with hot air. Let's put this on the side and measure. Do we still have a short? And you see, I'm telling you, this burned flux here does not look healthy. Meter in diode mode, and do we have a short? And yes, we still have a short. Let's move on to capacitor number two. And if that does not solve the problem, then we will remove this chip next. And let's see, do we still have a short? I'm really optimistic that our short may be coming from this cap. But it's never that easy. Oh, look at this. Short is gone. <laughs> short is gone. It's that cap that is causing the short. Wow. Initially, we were reading a short on this end of the MOSFET. Now, if we measure, we are reading 0 0.4. Amazing. Let me plug my charging cable, and we should see a light on that charger. We have to. We have to see a light. Yes. Right there. <laughs> right there. That's it.
board is fixed. What if we can't find the value of that cap and replace it to save the world from complaints because somebody's going to complain and say, why didn't you replace that cap? That's a bypass cap. Okay. And right now, I'm reading 9.3 microfarads. Okay, let's put it back. Let's solder that one back and we're gonna grab a brand new one and replace the other one. But before we do so, let's prep the board a bit, add solder. So that's one. And let's grab another one. Since now we know the value of that capacitor, we're gonna grab a brand new one from here. Okay, we're all good. We are all good. We just want to make it look better than factory, so let me touch up on it with my soldering iron. That's it. The job is done. I'm going to give this laptop to Big Boss to reassemble. And we'll finish out the video with the final result. So let's rewind a bit. Initially, we tested the board under a thermal cam and we found a heat spot right here. So I removed the Wi-Fi card. I looked at this area of the board and we did not have any components. We had like a diffused heat spot. So I knew that heat was coming from the back. So I flipped the board and I noticed that heat was coming from this big MOSFET. So what I did is I replaced both MOSFETs so we can save time. It only takes me two minutes to replace the MOSFETs and it takes me a lot longer to measure. So I replaced those two MOSFETs, but that did not solve the problem. We noticed a short on the small MOSFET. So I followed the route of that short and we came across a lot of capacitors. I injected voltage on one of the big capacitors and we found the heat spot on the board. We found the heat spot, which way? We found the heat spot somewhere somewhere here yeah we found heat spot here but in here we had a small cap and using logic a small cap is not going to cause a 7 amp short so i flipped the board and i found two capacitors that had signs of burnt flux i removed the capacitors and we found the short let's test one more time just to make sure that we still have that light and then we're going to reassemble and test to make sure the laptop is fully functional so I plug the charger and the light is right here. So I'm gonna give this to Big Boss to reassemble and I'll be back. We reassembled the motherboard and laptop is working. We do not have a hard drive inside, but you can see that the laptop is working. See you, Big Boss is gonna finish reassembling the laptop. Job is done, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.